guys and welcome to today's video. Happy 2019. I haven't filmed a video yet this year because I have had a really really nice time off which has been great. Sorry I just curled my hair and I feel like it's a bit too curly still. I am officially back to work tomorrow which is Monday. This video is probably going up on Monday although I was aiming to get it up today but it's 2pm now so that's looking terribly unlikely but I wanted to share with you my 2018 favourites. Not just my beauty favourites but also like entertainment favourites and a couple of clothing favourites but that's kind of a tricky one and I'll talk about that when we get on to that kind of part of the video. So some of you may have realised I didn't film a what I got for Christmas video I just didn't fancy it, like I wanted the time off, I, it, they're not my favourite type of videos. I actually didn't watch any this year, not even one. It's really tricky because what I get is very different to what other people get and I don't really want people to feel bad, I don't want people to be like judging how much or how little I get. Um, actually that's not really the reason, I just feel like they're a bit, almost a bit pointless. I don't really have a comment on what people have given me, I can't be like, oh yeah I really like this and I wasn't as keen on that because that's a bit ungrateful and I haven't tr I hadn't had a chance to try them so I just feel like a bit of a pointless video I didn't do that this is kind of like my video to end off 2018 but next Sunday I will be filming what will hopefully become a regular video it kind of like a weekly update lots of different topics covered not just like what's going on in my life but like what I've been loving, what series I would recommend, interesting news topics potentially, I'm not sure but um, I also have no idea what to call it. It's basically what I wanted my thoughts and obsessions to be last year but then that didn't really work out. It's going to definitely be a bit of trial and error but going forward into 2019 I want to really try really hard with my videos. At the beginning it might take a little while to get the ball rolling but I've got some ideas that are kind of like trickier to film than me just sitting here talking to you. I might not have two videos up next week, I probably won't but hopefully after that I'll kind of start getting up two videos a week and hopefully they'll be kind of more interesting than just me kind of talking about here's my new Topshop order and I will be having notes on my phone pretty much every video which I'm going to try and disguise but just know that if I do look down it's because of that I want to be able to give you as much information as possible since I can't store that all in my brain I need my phone to look at notes but onto this video this is my 2018 favourites I wanted it to be beauty and other stuff as well because as much as I love beauty I don't love beauty as much as I once did um, I can do a whole video on that if you fancy also these are products that I've loved this year not so much like the previous years and I tried to pick products that I've loved throughout the year or at least for a large chunk of the year but that is a bit hard if it's kind of like a new release um, and I haven't like picked a favourite eye cream, a favourite moisturiser, a favourite lipstick, a favourite like everything I've just picked just my favourites that I really really love rather than just choosing something for the sake of choosing it even though it's kind of mediocre but just the best of that category I'm not sure it's making sense. But let's get started. I will start with beauty for sure. My favourite two foundations, which actually I kind of struggle a little bit with foundation, but I really, really love these two. The first one which I'm wearing today is the Bare Minerals Bare Pro. Really, really like this. There are mixed reviews. I have quite dry, to normal to dry skin. This works really well for me. I like the coverage. My colour might be a little bit dark. I have Sandstone 16. I could probably do with like a shade or two lighter. Usually when I have fake tan on, my fake tan today isn't great by the way. But usually when I have fake tan on, fake tan on, this works really well. Really like this. It lasts all day. I like the coverage. I don't think it looks too heavy on the skin. But for when I do want something lighter, particularly this summer, I loved this by Trini London. It's the BFF cream. I have another one which is completely finished in medium, but and which I used in the summer. But this is light medium. Love this. It's kind of like a white product. And then it has like little particles inside which uh, adjust to your skin. I applied way too much for the back of my hand. Um, but it's a really natural, can you kind of see the difference? It adds a nice glow to the skin, it doesn't look heavy, it's kind of, it's almost colour correcting in my opinion rather than really hiding imperfections. It's just if you've got a bit of like discoloration or a bit of redness, it looks really nice. It's glowy, it's beautiful, it's not heavy at all, it's SPF 30. They call it a skin perfecter. I treat it as though it's a tinted moisturiser, which is, kind of, which is why I kind of said at the beginning, this is a foundation. It's not a foundation, it's just a touch of foundation with luminosity, which is what they say. Really, really like this and actually... Trini London is, is a brand that I've tried this year and I actually liked way more than I expected to like it but again if that's a topic you want me to talk about soon I can do that. Eyeliners. So there's been two eyeliners that I've loved. I have absolutely loved the Stila liner. I'm going to put a picture in it because I have run out of mine. I think I've gone through two this year and I haven't got a new one because since then I've started using the Elizabeth Arden Beautiful Colour Bold Defining Fell Tip Liquid Eyeliner. It's just another one that I really like. Honestly I have tried 
every eyeliner going. Every time someone recommends an eyeliner, I give it a go. PR for Elizabeth Arden recommended this eyeliner and I was like, yeah, whatever, it's not gonna be that good. I love it. It is as amazing as she kind of claimed it was. For me, I have very, very watery eyes. As soon as it's cold, I, my eyes just stream. I have hay fever, streaming eyes. This lasts really well. Actually, probably better than the Steeler one. The Steeler one, I don't think smudges, but it kind of crumbles after a little bit if my eyes are very watery. Whereas this one lasts really, really beautifully. And I have been using this lots and I love it. It's what I've got on today. I will say my eyeliner is never perfect. I'm okay with that. I try, I really do, but eyeliner's hard. So on from that, Urban Decay's Cherry Palette has been my favourite eyeshadow palette. Probably came out, I want to say September, it might be wrong. I think I got it about September, maybe early October, so I guess I haven't been using it for that long, but I really, really like it. It fits also with 2018's kind of theme of these more warm cherry tones um, with a little bit of oranges. I think everyone loves an orange eyeshadow at the moment. Really, really like this palette. Currently my most reached for eyeshadow palette whenever I go away. And I think actually these are reasonably priced for the amount of shadows you get. Mascara, I really wanted to talk about mascara, but... I feel like there's nothing really that stood out that much. I have, I love Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara and L'Oreal Paradise. They've probably been my two favourites, but um, I feel like that's nothing new. I've mentioned those. And finally, the lipstick I've been really liking was kind of an accident. Usually I feel like I preempt loving a lipstick. That's not what happened with this. For example, Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk, I thought I was going to love. I'm really indifferent towards it currently. Who knows? Maybe it will change. But currently I'm very indifferent towards it. But I have been loving... Urban Decay's Naked Lipstick. It's a pinky nude. It's just nice. There's nothing special. I like a creamier nude because I find that they look less harsh than a matte nude. They're easy to reapply, which I like. And I think once I run out of this, I will repurchase it. I really, really liked it. And it was one that I kind of just saw there and just ended up using. I typically mix a lot of nudes. It's a really nice one to mix. If I put on a nude that isn't quite right, I like put a little bit of this on top and it really like helps, so I've really been loving that. And then finally for makeup, my favorite powder has been YSL's Souffle de Claire, de Claire, I don't know, Souffle de Claire is what I'm gonna go with. I have the color two, I think. I've been using this since June, I've absolutely loved it. These are relatively expensive, I think it's probably like 30, 40 pounds, but I, don't, I use it literally every single day that I wear makeup, and I think I'm about halfway through, so I've used about £20 worth, I would say, in six, seven months. I No, actually, I've been using this since May, because I went to Paris in April, and that's when Michelle from Beauty and the Blog recommended it, so April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Using it for almost nine months, and unlike my powders that I was using before, they were really separating around my nose, I don't get that with this. It doesn't flash back, which is great. My favourite brush to apply it. Actually, this isn't anything new. I love this brush. It's my number one favourite brush. If I could have a hundred of them, I probably would, but that'd be ridiculous. I have I have four of these. Is the Real Technique setting brush. I use this to set my under eye. Actually, I use this to set my whole face, but I think it's really good for highlight. And I think in theory you could use it for loads of other stuff, but I don't because they're really hard to differentiate. So I have a double-ended one I use for highlight and the other ones I use just for powder. Um, mine needs a good wash. On to hair, my favorite hairbrush, well, I'm not gonna turn it around because it has got hair in it because I just finished using it, is my wet brush. This one actually looks wet, which I love. I've mentioned this before, but once I left this on the side in my parents' bathroom, and my mum was like, why did you leave your hairbrush all wet? And then she went to like dry it for me. She was like, oh, actually. It's just like that. I think it's really fun. Love wet brushes. I used to not understand the hype. Now I totally do. My entire family use wet brushes. I have big ones, small ones. Most of my family have big ones and small ones. They are great and nothing else compares as far as I'm concerned. My next hair product is the KMS Add Volume Leave-In Conditioner. I have very fine but very knotty hair and I want a bit of volume. But I also want something that will like d knot, and I find this really really helps. I use this every time I wash my hair and I this is my third bottle I want to say maybe my fourth I'm not sure but I really really love this. There is another one from KMS which is add volume it's more sticky it is good and I use it sometimes if I want more volume but for every day I find this is enough and then my favorite hair tool is undoubtedly my GHD I think it's called a soft curl. I love this so much I've now started using the clip, I don't know if that's what it's called, I didn't use the clamp, didn't use to use the clamp but now I do, really love this, use it basically every time I curl my hair which is a lot, I wish I curled my hair every single day but I can't curl my hair as soon as I've washed it because um, 
it's like too clean and I wash my hair a lot so it's not always an option but love this hair curler it is expensive though i can't really compare it to cheaper ones because i just haven't used any cheaper ones in a long time if you can splurge this one's great but i'm sure there are some good more inexpensive hair tongs and then for skincare i have been loving masks generally but i haven't really found like one favorite mask which is kind of like my mission for 2019 so if any of you guys have any masks you really love then please leave it down below the other thing i've really been liking i don't actually have one because to be honest it's at my boyfriend's house um and it looks grubby AF, so I didn't bring it. It's the Oskia tanning drops. They are outrageously expensive. I use it with the Oskia oil. I mix them together on my face. It's not what I used last night though, but that's what I typically use. I love them. I don't find it drying. I find it applies really nicely, but it's outrageously expensive. If you can splurge that, fair enough but I understand it's quite expensive. And I think I might do a little bit of a video about my favorite face fake tans soon. My favorite cleanser, there are some other cleansers I really, really I really love. I love Armavitska Thermal Cleansing Balm, but the, kind of like the new one to me this year, and one I've used loads and loads this year, is the Elemis Pro Collision Cleansing Balm. This is probably my second tub I've almost finished. It's really lovely. I love, love, love a balm for cleansing, but a lot of cleansing balms break me out. This one doesn't. It's more affordable than the Armavitska, and it's just great. I really like it. I also have some mini ones, which I always travel with. It's a really lovely treat at the end of an evening and it just removes my makeup really, really well. And then my favourite perfume has been YSL's Mon Pari. I think that's what it's called. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. This usually has a lid. I've lost the lid. I love this. I feel like I kind of accidentally started loving this. Again, I feel like... Oh, this sounds ridiculous, but I feel like there's always perfumes that I try to love. I try to love loads of Jo Malone fragrances. A lot of them aren't for me. There are a few that are beautiful, but generally I don't love all of them. I tried to love Glossier. It was nice, but really this is my favorite love this perfume so much now onto clothes i don't have anything to show you i'm going to insert pictures instead i really hope you don't mind a basic which i think really got me through this year was the asos body it just has a thick strap really like it because a i quite like a body b it has thick strap i mean it's got thicker straps than spaghetti straps but it's still a nice like it's still not got sleeves i don't know if this is making sense so it's great when i want a top that hasn't got sleeves but I can still wear a bra with straps with it and it won't be seen unlike if you wear spaghetti straps i'm hoping this is making sense and i find that if you've got a bigger bust that's always a plus is if you can hide your bra under it a bra with straps in the summer i loved my espadrilles from asos they were 25 pounds they were great i bought them in two colors actually black and nude black 100% were nicer than the nude ones, but they were 25 pounds. I wore them loads. I'm hoping to wear them next year. They were amazing. Then I also loved wooden or wicker bags. Loved them. I'm so excited to get them out again in the summer. I'm really hoping that they'll still be cool, but even if they're not cool, I'm probably still going to be wearing mine because I did absolutely love them and I just thought they were quite fun and went with every outfit. And then my favourite bag, which will probably surprise nobody, is the Azarina camera bag. Azarina as a whole, I've loved as a brand, but this has been my number one bag. There have been other bags that I've really, really loved. I also discovered that I really like this colour in bags. They've really, uh, they really work for me. They kind of go with like pinks, which I wear quite a lot. And they also work quite well with like most colours, if I'm honest, but they're not black. So I've really, really liked burgundy bags, but this one in particular is my absolute favourite. Just loads fits in it. Weirdly, there's a lot of tissue in here at the moment, but it fits my purse, it fits a camera, it fits my keys, it fits my phone. Just like it is, oh, it is fairly tight, but it does definitely fit my phone. It's kind of all I really need. It's small, easy to carry, it kind of fits under coats quite nicely. Which, if I'm anywhere really busy, I do put my bag under my coat. I don't really know why, but I do. Personalization is cute. They are relatively affordable. I think they're 40 pounds. It's my absolute go to. They do it in black if you're more of a black bag person but I would definitely check out Azarina as a whole but in particular this bag has been my absolute favourite and I think I'm a bag person more than a shoe person then on to entertainment and this is my last section I didn't really know what else to talk about because I can't really talk about food because generally like there's all different types of food that I would like let's grab the book I want so I don't know if you can tell there's actually a copy there and there's a copy here I uh, was sent one and I was gonna give it to a friend but then I decided that I'm gonna keep one to lend to people and I'm gonna keep one as mine at home because I really love it that much that it's something that I kind of don't want to be without as sad as that sounds but this is the Dolly Alderton everything I know about love book I absolutely loved this book it's it's just amazing it's like the best book I've 
oh, this sounds so sad, but probably I've ever read. I don't read a lot. I like non-fiction. And this kind of got me back into reading. In 2019, I want to do a lot more reading. I've got quite a lot of new books that I want to read. My aim is to read 16 books. Mm, was it 16? Gosh, it's quite a lot. It was 16 books on Goodreads. I did set it to 16. I love Dolly Alton as a whole. She's been a 2018 favourite. But this book in particular, I just think is amazing. I can't recommend it enough. It is great. It's, well, I think it's particularly great, A, if you live in England, and B, if you're kind of a similar age to me, I'm 26. All of my friends have quite liked it as well. I can't recommend it enough. I really, really, really did like it. And I feel like a lot of my other favourites that I'll go on to kind of like came out of this book because then I also really got into podcasts because Dolly Alderton does two podcasts. My favourite Dolly Alderton podcast was Everything I Know About Love, which she has announced is coming back for a second series. I use Acast to listen to my podcast if anyone's interested because weirdly I think like I feel that not everyone does listen to podcasts but I think there's a podcast out there for everyone so if you're into my sort of podcast I do have a few recommendations I use Acast to listen to podcasts Dolly Alderton Everything I Know About Love started off my love for podcasts and is 100% my favourite podcast currently and if you follow me on Instagram this is nothing new I've mentioned this before I also like Dolly Alderton and Pandora Sykes Hilo that's really cool too but that is currently on a break but you can go back and watch a few other ones and then my second favourite podcast my third favourite podcast I would say is Table Manners with Jessie Ware some of the episodes are better than others but that's just normal because she doesn't always have the most amazing celebrities as her guests but sometimes she does um, and the ones with the amazing celebrities are the best ones but also I did really like At Home With which is Lily Pebbles and Anna Newton's podcast um, I think I liked season one but actually season two was even better in my opinion yeah I just love podcasts uh but those have been my favourites and podcasts as a whole have definitely been a favourite for this for last year. Then I'm just going to quickly mention my top films uh, and series that I watched. Um, I've mentioned this before, I'm super geeky. I rate everything I watch on IMDb. It's a great way for me to track what I've seen and also to track what I've loved. My favourite, what should we start with, films or series? Favourite films, actually both were totally unexpected. I've mentioned before I don't love films. For me, I love, love, love series. I think you get a better bond with the characters and that's what I want. I like binge watching series. But for me, my favourite two films were, number one would be Three Billboards Outside something Missouri. I went with my friends to see, what were we going to go see? We were going to go see The Greatest Showman, which I still haven't seen, which is crazy. But um, we got there a bit late and it was me, my boyfriend, my friend and her boyfriend. And the boyfriends were like, oh, let's just go see Three Billboards. And I was like, never heard of this film. It's not going to be good. I was like, I don't want to go. And then I was like, P guys, like, please promise it's not fantasy. I don't really, I really don't enjoy fantasy. And they were like, no, no, don't worry. It's not fantasy. I loved it. And I think part of the reason why it was even better for me was because I had no expectations going in. Actually, I had very low expectations. I wasn't expecting to like it. I'd never heard of it. I went in kind of just hoping that the that the boys were right and that it was going to be all right it was great i absolutely loved it i can't recommend it enough and then the second one has been largely hyped about but i just assumed it wasn't for my age group and probably it isn't for my age group but i really liked it and that is to all the boys i loved before which is on netflix so really easily available it was just great and it was just like a nice like feel good movie and I'd highly recommend it. I didn't think I was going to like it. Although it is kind of my genre, I thought it was going to be like too teen and a bit like high school musical-y. It wasn't and I really, really liked it. But if you guys have any recommendations of anything I may have missed in 2018, then do leave those down below. And then my favourite series were, and I watched this at the beginning of the year, almost can't remember it, but it was Big Little Lies. It has been commissioned for season two, so I would highly recommend catching up with season one. It was so good. It was quite different to everything I've seen before. I loved it. It's got some great actresses as well. This Is Us, again, so, so good. It's available on Amazon Prime. I cried. I think every single episode I am a crier, so that's not saying much but it was so, so good. I would highly recommend that. And then the third one is Bodyguard. I watched this like last week, I think. It's relatively short on the BBC. So if you live in the UK, it's really easily accessible, but I really didn't want to finish 2018 without watching it. And I loved it. I feel I'm gonna start Lufa next. So if any of you guys have seen that, do let me know. But I loved it. And I'm holding off watching series for a little while, maybe like a couple of, maybe like a month almost, because I do get sucked in and then I don't do much else. 
last. Maybe if I've got a spare weekend, I might start loofah, but I'm hoping to wait a little bit longer than that. But loved the bodyguard. I had watched Killing Eve, which some people had said was better than the bodyguard. Some people. I know that's not like the general opinion, but some people had said that. I think it was even on one of the podcasts I listened to. It's not. Bodyguard was so good. But anyway, that's the end of my 2018 favourites. It was quite long. I guess a year is a long time, so I had a few favourites to share with you, and I didn't really want to divide this into two videos. If you did enjoy this video, though, I feel I'm going to do something like this more regularly. Not necessarily talk about my favourites, but talk about makeup I've been enjoying, books I've been reading, or even, like, makeup I haven't been enjoying. Uh, just stuff I've been trying and using, and kind of being a bit of a guinea pig I guess and kind of sharing my opinions with you series that everyone's talking about do I like them do I not for example you on Netflix if you follow me on Instagram you might already know my opinion on that but I just can't maybe next week I'll share my opinion about you I'm gonna try not to do spoilers basically I just want to do a more regular video where we kind of get to chat and I really want comments and I want interactions and I want your opinions I would love like topics if there's anything in particular you would like me to talk about not just about films or makeup but just kind of across the board and hopefully that'll be like my regular Sunday video I might just call it like the Sunday video but if you have anything more creative that maybe fits with a little obsessed or something like that do let me know. Maybe if I love it, I might even send you like a little beauty care package. Anyway, I've been rambling for ages. I've really enjoyed filming this video. I'm really looking forward to 2019. I hope you guys are too, but I shall see you all very soon, probably on Sunday. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you in particular for all the support in 2018, and I will see you all very soon. Bye.